Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Spares Box. Today we're back on the Cresta and we're changing our ignition coil system. Uh, we do currently have R35 coils and we're going to be still using R35 coils. But the way we've installed these previously has always been a bit of a compromise. So the guys at PRP have actually just released their brand new barrack kit. Um, I think we've got one of the first ones, so we're going to whack it on today. Um, there's a new ignition loom, we've got new coils, we've got a new bracket. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to get it on because it means that number one coil is actually going to fit properly now. Um, the boots they've made are custom ones, so there's no longer um, the factory barra boot with some weird stretch spring action. So I'm hoping that we'll get a better result with the ignition system now than what we're currently running. So. Let's get into it. On any engine that the spark plugs are inside the cylinder head or inside a well, it's a really good idea to blow them out every time you're in there. Uh, regardless of whether you're pulling the plugs out or not uh, because sometimes when you're at the track or something like that you don't have compressed air to be able to blow it out before you pull the plugs out so on this occasion we're going to give it a really good blast because the coil studs that I previously installed were uh, loctited into the rock cover and now some of that loctite's fallen down the spark plug well uh, loctite shouldn't really be too bad for an engine if it was to go into a cylinder but on the same token it's better to just not even attempt it so just going to give it a really good blowout and make sure that there's nothing sitting in those spark plug wells that could cause us a problem. Uh, also, whenever you're dealing with compressed air, really good idea to chuck some safety glasses on. Uh, it saves you all sorts of problems later. This is the uh, Platinum Racing Barra Kit. It's a pretty comprehensive kit, so you obviously you get your adapter bracket, you get your three coils. These are the Hitachi style R35 coils. There's different ones out there. The internet knows which one's better. Um, Platinum Racing actually did a really good video with Motive DVD comparing a lot of coils a while ago. I watched that um, as well as some of their other tech stuff's pretty interesting. Um, one thing I do like, you get a new terminated ignition harness and you also get these boots. So uh, previous generations of some of the PRP stuff, you were using the original boots or, or a combination of stuff. Now they've gone one step further and they've, they're actually moulding their own silicon boots now, so that's really cool. Um, yeah, one issue we had previously when we did our own R35 coils into the barrow was the boots weren't perfect. So they've, yeah, they've, they've gone further and fixed those problems. So we'll, uh, we'll crack these open. I'm going to do a side by side with a factory R35 coil, our coils, and then now the new PRP setup to sort of explain the differences and, and what's going to work in what application. We've got our three R35 coils laid out in front of us here. Obviously, this is the way that it comes from Nissan or Hitachi or whoever supplies the coil. So you've got your factory stem and six mil hole. That's pretty much as they come. And this was uh, our attempt at the Barra conversion. So we basically just used the original uh, Barra stem onto the uh, R35 coil. The complication we had there was the uh, Barra rocker cover is M8 and these are obviously M6. So we went to a, a stud setup and the problem, the problem with that is having to actually physically drill the coil was very difficult uh, without damaging that sleeve. We did get it done, but it was a total mission. Um, yeah, then obviously going to this brand new setup. This is the PRP one. So you've got purpose-made silicon boots, still the six mil mounting hole. So if you did kill a coil or had to change it down the road, super simple. You just go and buy them off the shelf. There's no modifications. And then, yeah, you've got your your ignition spring inside the boot. So that's purpose made now. There's no shortening or modifying or reusing barra springs. So they go in there super simple and super neatly. Um, one thing you have to be mega mindful of when you're doing R35 coil conversions, if I can get this off on camera without exploding everything, is that exact thing. Make sure you do not lose this resistor. Um, it's pretty vital to the running of the coil. Um, also, a tip I got from Scotty Hilsinger or Tuning Fork, if you're playing around with R35 coils, do not ever uh, give these a, a, a gap to test spark. Don't try and jump a gap with them. Um, apparently, it can blow that resistor. So yeah, you've got to be super mindful of that. 
Um, and to my knowledge, you can't buy those resistors separately from the coils. So it could be a $100 lesson for two seconds of mucking around. So yeah, be very careful not to kill those uh, resistors or lose them. Um, a lot of these coil springs too, they're made with that resistor to be there. So the length will be incorrect. And then you'll have all sorts of issues where you won't have correct contact or correct spring tension. So yeah, be pretty mindful of all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna build these coils now. We'll change the boots over and then we'll mount it, put our bracket in and get it all back together. We've now got our coils all mounted. We've got our new loom run. Um, this kit's really good in the fact that it comes with everything you need. Uh, we, we opted for the conversion aftermarket ECU loom. You can actually get uh, a different loom that has an adapter box because the factory Ford ECU and also the Haltech um, Elite Pro plug and play won't run R35 coils directly but uh, PRP actually do a converter box that allows you to run these with the stock ECU, so that's really cool. Obviously, we're running the Elite 2500, so it doesn't require, or it doesn't have built-in igniters in the ECU, so basically just um, deleted whatever was there and whacked it in. Um, this is our original coil harness that is primarily Ford wiring. Uh, when we originally did this, it was a bit of a rush job, and we reused the Ford pins in the Nissan connectors and then just ran the earth as its own wire. Um, the Ford pins aren't, aren't a perfect fit in that connector, so I think we may have had some issues there. And while I was there, we've also actually removed the variable cam timing wiring. Uh, what I've done is just put a plug down the back of the cylinder head, so if we do ever want to add that back into the loom, we can. I'm not sure why we'd probably put it back, but just to neaten the harness up, I've removed those and just re-terminated out of the way. So we don't need that anymore. Um, I did actually use, at one point we had a Haltech coil loom in here for an RB. It's a pretty good fit, but some of the lengths weren't quite perfect. Obviously an RB's got different coil spacing and stuff, so the front coil was a little bit tight. But in saying that, when we ran that, the coils were also turned around the other way. So potentially now with these coils installed the way they are, the RB Haltech loom would also work just as well. Um, luckily, I used a, a Deutsch connector as well, so we've just repinned it into the connector supplied by uh, Platinum. The only difference is their terminals were slightly different, so it allowed me to crimp the two high current wires in that connector as well, whereas the pins that I had were only for the low current circuits. So I ran a separate high current connector. So now we've got the, the different style of Deutsch connector. It's all in there and nice. So that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much us done. Nice short little episode today, but it's uh, going to get us, hopefully we'll have a more reliable ignition system now. Um, we've been to the track a couple of times, we've been on the dyno a couple of times. And we've had ignition problems that are just reoccurring now that we've, now that we're asking a lot more of the ignition system, it's starting to get random backfires here and there. Uh, cylinder two, we are isolated to be the issue consistently. So that was the reason we fitted the Haltech loom. Unfortunately, during that time, we've now uh, had restricted activities with the current uh, climate with the the virus and everything that's going on the tracks now closed so yeah we've now basically been limited to tinkering in the garage uh, with that in mind while the car's basically not not being used we pulled the transmission out um, peter hughes wants to change the stator in the converter we don't have that yet but we will film changing the stator it's pretty cool so our converter bolts together um, and we've also sent the transmission off to a local specialist who's the, the, the Sydney Hughes um, like 
qualified repairer. So those guys are just going to strip the transmission down and go through it, give it a bit of a once over. Hopefully they'll keep the old parts for us so we can give a bit of an explanation as to what we've found and what we've changed. But yeah, for now we're uh, basically just going to park the old girl in the corner. Um, who knows what's going to happen. By the time you guys are watching this video, we may be in lockdown, who knows. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.